Hello World's Ice House here, bringing you another guide, weapon guide in this case, it'll be for the Falconic Plasma Bow. This is one of the weapons that was available at the release of the game. For a too long didn't watch, this weapon is very good against guards, it's very good on the hard guard heavy maps. All guards have a weak spots so that they can be hit from the front even if they are armoured. Some of them are easier than others. But there's also some shenanigans you can do with the fact that you have a high ammo capacity on this weapon. But let's go straight into the overview. Okay, overview. Uh, not a super technical weapon, but there are some fun things you can do with it. Uh, so, Falconic Plasma Bow has an effective range of 100 meters. This just means that it doesn't have as much drop off as the Vault Lancer. You can. It shoots pretty much straight. There was a little bit of drop, but at most ranges where you can actually, where things are rendering in, you won't really notice it. Uh, ammo capacity, it started at 6 and it went up to 10 and then 15. Uh, 10 and then 15? Yeah, 10 and then 15. 10 and then 15 at level 2, then 3. So you get a lot of ammo capacity as you level it up. This is very good. One of the best uses for it is just. The reason it's very good is because it has this high ammo capacity, so you don't have to worry about your ammo. For reference, you can only have 20 guards on a map. So if you are landing every shot, there are, at mo even if you lose every single ammo, there's only 5 guards left for your other weapon to deal with. Uh, reload time of 0.5 seconds, that's incredibly fast. You probably are not going to even notice that. And because of that, you're not really going to notice the difference if you grab the reload. By, uh, the reload time bio link from the iron side and damage type striking this is which is only flesh this is the important thing because with only flesh you can't destroy traps with this and you can't destroy armor with this you have to hit a spot where on the guard that is unarmored all armoured guards will always have their back exposed, but there are other spots that you can hit them from the front as well, which we'll go over it in a minute. As for the features that get unlocked as you level it up, most of it's just ammo capacity, but at level 3 you do get higher projectile speed, which means that it shoots, because uh, it shoots faster, it shoots even, even more straight, effectively. Like it, there's even less drop because it is fire, it, it is flying so fast. It also gets heavier projectiles. I do not know what impact this has because the projectiles are still super light. I've never. It's it's. You can't test it unless you're at level two and do your testing there and then test at level three, which basically require two accounts. And I haven't heard of anyone actually trying that. Suffice it to say, the projectiles are still super light, even if they are heavier than they were before, and the it might just have something to do with how it bounces, which we'll get into in a minute as well. Anyway, let's jump over to the basics. Okay, for the basics, let's start with, you can destroy tombs with this, but I've also just got like a bunch of guards here, and you'll notice that... I can aim pretty much straight at them and shoot and they die and you'll notice that they didn't actually fall very far even this one didn't even hit that wall it kind of just flopped down guards when hit with the falconic plasma bow don't actually fall very far they kind of just drop where they are there's a little bit of knockback like that one was standing there so it's fallen half a block and that's significantly less than the, say, Vault Lancer, for instance. Pickup range for bolts is the same. Still seems to be 4 meters by default. 6 with the boost from Bandai Link. But something interesting is that, generally speaking, when you shoot the Plasma Bow, let's just shoot it a little bit further away, it gets stuck in the whatever you're shooting at. But, when it comes to metal and glass blocks, which you can tell if they're metal or glass when you're in the build up by either, it'll either say metal or steel in the, in the actual name of the block, or metal or steel in the description. 
or with Glassbox, it'll say Glass either in the description or the, the title of the block, so you can kind of tell them apart. I don't think there's anything that doesn't say metal or steel currently, metal, steel or glass, that it bounces off of, but the you can normally tell when something's metal or steel, I feel like, most of the time. But anyway, uh, when you shoot something like that, it bounces off, so you see there, it bounced off there and then went over to there, which can make it confusing to actually determine where your bolts are in the long run. But you can also, if you are lucky, which I am not, you can like work this out and actually get these shots off. Can I get it from over here maybe? No, it really doesn't like me today. This is not easy to do, but you can actually bounce off things and kill guards. There we go. Yeah, so that is a trick you can do. It's not super useful most of the time. Okay, so we're starting with the enforcer here. So this is an armored enforcer, so you'll notice that there is armor up on the chest piece here, but nothing on the legs, also nothing on the weapon or the face. Anywhere that you hit that is part of the default model, so not added when armor was added, will kill. So legs, face, and this probably most importantly, the weapon. Even though it's made out of metal and you would think that maybe it would bounce off of it, if you shoot it, they die. So generally speaking, when you're quite far away, I wouldn't recommend aiming for the weapon, but you, it can be an easy thing to spot because it, you can, it glows orange as they're preparing an attack, which can be useful. I would generally recommend legs, shooting for legs for enforcers, unless you're like really far above them, in which case the head is normally easier. But, yeah, the, that's dealing with an armored enforcer. Obviously, if you hit the armor itself, which I can even do when it's dead, the shot just bounces off of it. And that would not kill the enforcer or damage the armor in any way. Okay, so cannonbacks are an interesting case because they have armor on their chest and legs, but they don't actually have a particularly highly exposed area unlike most others. So you can shoot the head, but notice how it bobs up and down a little bit, and that can actually make it quite difficult to shoot at a range. It is also a fairly small target, just in general. One of the best things I'd recommend for dealing with cannonbacks is their weapon. So you can see the shoulder up there. If I shoot that, they die. But importantly, if I reset this, if I actually aggro them, they bring their weapon out, and it's a huge target that you can just shoot. There are other spots you can hit. Uh, backs are good. But, the generally speaking, the largest area that is unarmored on an armored cannon back is the weapon itself. And because it st stays relatively still while it's aiming at you, it makes it a really good target to hit in most cases. Hornets are a weird case because their armor only covers their torso, doesn't cover their wings, weapons, feet, head, arms, so it's covering a very small amount of area on them, similar to enforcers and ravagers, but generally speaking they can be attacking you from like any angle. So, for instance, this one here, the best way to target this one is probably actually to go for the wings. Whereas, to shoot this one up here, I'd probably go for the legs. Or at least where the legs join the torso, because the, that part isn't actually safe. And it's only if I aim a little bit too high that I'll bounce off of the armor. So, depending on, like... but. The legs being quite thin means that if I was to do that on this one here, I might, uh, I'm might i more likely to miss, particularly if I was significantly further away. You wouldn't normally be this close, obviously. Okay, so we're just kind of speedrunning these two quickly. So, Ravagers are basically the same as Enforcers. They're just obviously a different, slightly different profile, but legs, weapon, head. Generally going for the legs is the best one. Head, if you are really high above them, can be easier. And the Warmonger is very similar to the Cannonback in that it has armor on its legs, torso, 
but not on its weapons. So weapons can be a good way to deal with them. If I shoot here, they die. One alternate use for the plasma bow bolts is that you can use them to shoot down objects in the world, including projectiles, but also iron claws and bombs. If you see my power guide, you've already seen all this, but let's just quickly show that off here. So if I do that, I can shoot down the plasma thing and the cloud doesn't go off. But also, if I stand here, I can shoot down the iron claw and disable the iron claw trap. The last thing I want to cover is using the plasma bow bolts to help mark things that you've scouted out from the outside. So there's a lot of information you can actually garner from going around the out external of the map and just having a look around and seeing what you can spot. Most of the time it comes in the form of bedrock blocks that aren't connected to bedrock because the generally speaking bedrock can't spawn like that. The, uh, there is one block below the gen mat which is the only one that can. So for instance all this bedrock on the ground here is all fine because it's all connected to the, the ground and to the other bedrock. That's all good. But that one there and that one up here are not. So I can mark them like this and I now will be able to see the gen map through, uh, using the shot tracker biolink from the Ironside suit I can see I, I know where the gem mat is from like 40 meters away through walls, which can be very useful, especially when you're doing a maze. And the reason I've done it like this with one here and two here is just so that I can denote them differently. Though if I was to come up here, I would notice that this block here isn't a... because it, one block above it would be the gen mat and... This, that would mean that this would be the gen mat roof, which doesn't look like a hellscape block. It has a metal texture that is always there for the gen mat. So I know that one is not the gen mat, but it could still be worth marking because it kind of looks like a secret exit. Best of what I'm seeing there. And yeah, and so I'm denoting it with two. So I think one is where the gen mat is and two is where I think the secret exit is. So I go through the whole maze there's no actual maze here, I'm not building that for for this purpose, this is showing it off. So I can see that, yeah, just I've got this one here that's just below the gen mat, and that helps me to find where the gen mat is. Grab the gen mat. This is clearly a hollow cube, because it didn't turn into something else when I grabbed the gen mat. And that lets me find the secret exit as well. Can be quite useful but it only really works if you use the shot tracker perk from the iron side suit. So if you can't afford to grab that particular perk, you can't really do this strategy. But it is something that I've used before when playing dual gun. Okay, full loadouts. The plasma bow has some pretty clear issues in that its damage type is bad. Now, you can kind of ignore armor, because armor's only ever on guards, and there's always holes in it. So, you don't need, necessarily, to find a weapon that can deal with a crushing damage type, so you can actually deal to armor. But, you do need something that can destroy traps, most of the time. You, outside of certain weird playstyles. The... Arc Barrier gives you no option and can only destroy a couple traps in the game, so it doesn't really work. Demo Cannon has trouble with certain positionings of traps, which makes it not really work either. And the melee weapons both have a, a issues with certain positionings of traps, as well as their, they generally put you in a more dangerous area, so they would prefer something that has a bit more defensive capability, whereas the Falconic Plasma Bow has none of that. It is purely an offensive and utility weapon. So the only weapon that I would actually recommend at the moment that we have to pair with it is the Vault Lancer. The Vault Lancer is fairly complete, so you don't necessarily need it, but it does have issues with ammo traps, and most ammo traps will have to be created with a guard to actually trap the ammo. Because otherwise you know where the ammo is, because it will be in the trap. So in those cases, 
the Falconic Plasma Bug gives you 15 additional shots that will allow you to deal with those, and even if you lose the ammo, it's not generally a big deal, but it you can do things similar to what you would do with a Vault Lancer to save your ammo on the Plasma Bow, and that can help you deal with even more of those ammo traps, and the you barely even need to do that. So I'd recommend the Vault Lancer and the Falconic Plasma Bow. It's the only real weapon setup that I would recommend. As for suits, if you are only ever using it with the Vault Lancer, then you might as well use the Iron Side suit anyway. But the Iron Side suit is the only one that has biolinks that affect the Plasma Bow. I do not actually think, because you don't really need to pick up your ammo, the Magnetic Link is not as useful on this one. It's still useful. It's just that it's not a must-have like it would be with the the Vault Lancer. Uh, rapid Fire, you're not really going to notice a difference between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds, particularly on a weapon that you have to aim. It, it would be different if this was like a spray and pay weapon, but no, this is something that you need to aim, and you're typically going for snipes with. So I... 0.4 seconds theoretically could mess you up, but it's not... Uh, like the extra 0.1 second could it theoretically mess you up, but it's not generally going to. It's going to be a fairly minor impact. Shot Tracker, it has some utility, adds some extra utility to the fact that you have 15 shots and you probably don't need them, making it probably the most useful of these bio links at the moment, but it's not necessary. None of these are necessary. You can just use the Plasma Bow. It's good enough on its own for the one case that it is actually designed for. With that, we're finished with everything, going over for everything for the Plasma Bow. Next week, I'll be doing the Iron Side, because we've only got Iron Side and the Fury's Edge left. We'll be doing the Iron Side suit next week. So, um, stay tuned for that. Otherwise, uh, there'll be one or two videos throughout the week, and as per normal, and I shall see you then.